That was President Biden earlier today getting a warm welcome from America's largest federation of trade unions, as most union leaders said even before the event, that they're sticking with him. Joining us now, the nation national affairs correspondent, John Nichols. Um, how significant is it to have the union leaders say that they're with Joe? Incredibly significant. Look, the union leaders that were there are leaders of some of the biggest unions in the country. They went out of their way to be physically present with him, to show their solidarity, to show their support. They're obviously in D.C. at this point anyway. And, and I want to emphasize that one of the groups that was quickest to rally to Biden after the debate, to have people stepping up and, and issuing strong statements on his behalf, was organized labor. And uh, I've been at, uh, recently at a Biden rally in Madison, looked at the crowd that was there. A huge portion of the people that turned out were members of unions, especially the, the building trades unions. And these are folks who have a long tradition of actually not just giving an endorsement, but going out and knocking on doors and getting people to the polls. Uh, do the rank and file want him to stay in? I think it's a it, the rank and file of unions are like rank and file of uh, any other group in America. You're going to have a mix. And you've got, you know, some union folks uh, who have always been sympathetic to Trump. Uh, there may be some wavering there. But uh, what I can tell you is this, that, that one of the most powerful things in organized labor is labor's ability to do internal communications, to communicate to workers on the job site uh, in the union hall. And if their message is a consistent message emphasizing Biden's strengths, I emphasize in particularly his sympathy with labor, uh, that's hugely important to him because it is a counterbalance to everything that, frankly, is happening in the media. John, you're in Wisconsin, um, and, you know, we've been talking to a lot of folks about his President Biden's future. Um, we haven't been talking to as many people who are located inside some of these swing states. So I want to get a sense from you. What is the feeling among Wisconsinites about Joe Biden and his candidacy? I think they're really wrestling with uh, I've talked to people at Democratic events, as well as out in the community. Everybody's talking about it. It's a big deal. This is not a side story. It's not a political insider story. It's one that ordinary folks who aren't all that politically engaged are, enga are interested in and, and discussing. I think it's because it's so human. We've all had experiences with family members who maybe are getting older and having challenges. And, and so I want to emphasize, it's an honest, deep conversation. And an awful lot of people, I would say, are waiting to see the president's next move and the next move after that. Uh, it's a testing moment, but it isn't one where Biden's support has collapsed. It's much more of one where uh, I actually had people at the Biden rally in Madison on Friday say to me they had literally come to see him, to see how he's doing. And uh, so I think that, yes, he's got, a, he's got challenges. But my sense is that he also has some ability to maintain that connection with the people who did narrowly vote for him and give him the state in 2000. Yeah, narrowly is the key part there. Very. Yeah. Let me let me read you a little bit um, from your own writing about what Joe Biden, Joe Biden needs to do next. Um, you say Biden says the country is at an inflection point where the future of American democracy is at stake. This requires more than putting in your best effort in a controlled setting. It requires an absolutely determined candidate and a big, bold risk taking campaign that inspires Wisconsinites and voters nationwide to defeat Trump and Trumpism. Is he doing that? Nope, not yet. Um, he's got a lot of work to do. And, and uh, this isn't picking on him or being nice to him or whatever. It's simple reality. The president needs to get out into the country, do a lot of big events, not small events in front of friendly audiences, but big events. He needs to do town halls. He needs to do all sorts of local media interviews because those local media interviews in battleground states, especially the ones that are on the evening news there, are incredibly powerful. But the fact is, he's got to do that. No one else can do it. The vice president can help. Others can. But Joe Biden has got to you know, just ramp this campaign up dramatically. You're if he is determined to stay in the race, he's got to be all in. You got, you're talking about freewheeling settings, not not interviews that are tight, not prompter, not short events, just him out there taking questions, talking to people. That's right. And, and people need to see a lot of that. Mm. Uh, to underestimate that, if the Biden campaign underestimates that, they will put themselves in a very precarious position. What happens position. if he slips up in one of those situations? Well, I'm sorry, I lost you for a second. What happens if he slips up in one of those situations? 
It's fine. People are used to him slipping up that not in recent months, but in for decades. Joe Biden has has always had, you know, kind of a, a loose way of speaking and a little slip up isn't going to be a problem. Uh, I think the bigger problem is a sense that he's hidden away, that yeah. he isn't present. He's often been said to have had uh, foot and mouth syndrome <laughs> in the past. Uh, John People don't care about that. They care about whether he comes to see him and if they can have physical interaction. Yeah. With no, him. no. What I mean by that is he's always known to to be kind of a gaff machine. That's been part of the uh, the appeal that he's had. Um, John Nichols. Uh, John, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. And I'll hopefully see you next week while we are in Wisconsin. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki. Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more. September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.